Matt, I didn't know we were chilling, bro. What do you, do you have anything to do? Not right now. Do you, do you just want to hang out? Like chill? Yeah. Oh, cool. Sick. You all good, bro? No, I'm chilling. Okay, cool. You good? Nah. Oh, what's on your mind, bro? Like, you got, you have thoughts and you have, are you thinking? Yep. That's good though, bro. At least your brain is working and stuff. My mom's my dad now. Oh, yep. is that, that's what's been egging you, bro? Well, like, no, like, cause I'm like happy for her, like, like her, like Herm or whatever, like, I don't know what to call. But the thing is, like, he's not, like, not chill now. Like, she, he, like, she, Shim was chill when Herm was my mom. And now they, Hims is my dad. It's just on my ass, man. Oh. I don't know. Maybe because you've been smoking a lot more. Yeah. Than yet, so. so it's not really like they'll change, bro. It's... Yeah. Yeah. You know, honestly, there's actually something else on my mind. Oh. It's actually bugging me more than the whole dad and mom thing. Oh, snap. All right, I'm gonna tell you over here. Is that cool? Yeah, that's fine. Oh, you want me to follow you, bro? Yeah. Oh. All right. It's just like right over here. Oh, okay. All right. Right there. What are you doing right now? Um, oh, oh. I thought we were just coming over here. To, you're gonna tell me what's on your mind and stuff, right? Nah. This is kind of like in the past. Yeah. These oh, okay. dancing lights yeah, around me show, huh? are produced that's, by if that's fireflies. Yeah. Yeah. Creatures that have the strange ability to produce light. They bioluminesce. Many animals, including sharks, insects, and strange creatures from the deep, produce their own light. This groundbreaking film will venture into the soil beneath our feet, into mysterious tropical forests, and the twilight zone, the world of the deep ocean. Yes. Why do they glow? Are they communicating? And if so, what are they saying? Those questions have been answered in recent years by scientists. And in finding the answers, they've taken us into a world that is utterly unlike our own. Join me, David Attenborough, on a journey like...
Spaceman and the village I, I, people. It was, it was a trick, yeah. You were I know the village people. It up. That's village people 2025. Yes. But yeah, we know you walked out with the hat on. In yeah. the movie, of course, you but wear a hat. You but you're a hat guy. Yeah, yeah, I collect hats. This so did you get a chance to pick out the hat in the movie? Was that up to you what it looks like? Oh, we have the most careful? amazing uh, costume designer in the movie, this Italian woman named Milena Cananera. She's won Oscars. She worked with Stanley oh, wow. Kubrick, you know. So I was in really, really good hands. Everyone who worked on this film was like the top notch kind of people. But yeah, there are many different hats. When you're trying to find a character, you're like, it's funny, something as simple as a hat, but the geometry of a hat really affects the way your face looks. Like, if you look at my hat, like, you see that kind of like this, oh, there goes my microphone. Mic down. Um, come back. There we are. <laughs> You kind of like, you need to make this oval shape, and if it's too tall, then it looks weird. If it's too short, it looks weird. And then the dimension of the brim. So, yeah, anyway, there's a little hat lesson for you. Yeah. Go to a good hat store, and they'll be able to tell you all this stuff. But I've heard the thing, some people consider themselves old souls, but it seems you've just considered yourself old. You said to GQ, I've looked like a 53-year-old man since I was 18. <laughs> In my face, anyway. Yeah, my body is caught up now. <laughs> this suits me. So this is a picture from high yeah. school? See, what happened is my hairline eventually caught up with my face. And now I look appropriate. Like back then, it was like, why does this old man have such a beautiful head of hair? But, yeah. So maybe a different hat back in those days with the different... Yeah, yeah. I couldn't afford hats back then. But. <laughs> oh, man. Also, young man, you kind of look funny sometimes when you... If you don't have the right hat, but anyway, yeah. Well, you couldn't afford a hat back then, but you could, you can now. You can afford a hobbies. One of your hobbies, you collect clown paintings. I do, yes. But uh, you yes. can't keep them in the house. Well, I keep them in my office because my wife, who comes from an artistic family, she's a painter herself, and she's like, you know, let's keep the, art the artwork we agree on in the house. <laughs> and the work that you really like, you can have in your office. So... Yeah, I collect clown paintings, which clowns get a bad rap these days. <laughs> For some reason, people have decided clowns are scary, but I was a clown when I was a kid. I did my church group, and we did all kinds of, like, amazing work as clowns. So, you know, don't believe the hype, folks. Clowns are beautiful, <laughs> beautiful things. Yeah. Don't listen to Stephen King. Listen yeah. to John C. Well, Reilly. <laughs> sure, I mean, you can make anything scary. You got this movie out now called The Nun. All of a sudden, nuns are scary. Well, <laughs> Maybe, going down maybe right nuns now. were always scary, but no. No, they're messengers of God. Let's just a good thing. Okay, well, I don't know if you've heard, but Michael and I are huge Step Brothers fans. Ah, the I biggest. I did hear that, yeah. yeah. Can you tell us the number one quote people scream at you from Step Brothers? <laughs> there are well, so many. Well, it's always strange to have like a 11 year old boy scream boats and hoes at you, but. <laughs> uh, I think that's. A, that's more. <laughs> that's more of a reflection of his parenting than my work, but. Oh, man. Uh,